In Creo Parametric, the rotational blend feature allows you to connect sections about an axis of revolution. Let's take a look at how to create one. I'm going to go to the Shapes Overflow menu. Here is the Rotational Blend command. We have the dashboard opened up. You can generate this as a solid feature or a non-solid feature. I'm going to create this as a non-solid. If you already have your sections, you can select them, but I don't, so I'm going to sketch them. Let's go to the Sections tab. I have to define my first section. Let's click the Define button over here. Let me turn on my datum plane visibility. I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called Right. And I will leave Creo Parametrics suggestions for the orientation reference plane. Let's click the Sketch button. And I don't need to see my planes anymore. Let's turn off their display. I'm going to use the project command to grab the different edges of this extruded square. I'm going to use that later on for tangency. You'll notice on one of the vertices you will have an arrow and the direction that the arrow points does not matter. The arrow is going to be located on the start point and the start point is how Creo Parametric connects the vertices of one section to other sections. If you want to have a different start point, you can select the vertex that you want to use and then hold down the right mouse button and choose Start Point from the pop-up menu. Let me go to my sketch view. Like I mentioned, you're going to connect these different sections about an axis of revolution. So in order to have an axis of revolution, I'm going to sketch in a center line. You can also use a datum axis if you already have one in your model. And let's change this. I want this to be actually a different dimension. Let's click on the dimension icon. I want a dimension from here to here and then middle mouse button. I'm going to use a value of 80. That's good. Let's hit the check mark for our first section. And then a rotational blend with one section doesn't make any sense. So now we can define the location of the second section. If I could go to the sections tab over here, you see that you can either offset from the previous section a given angle, or you could locate it at some specified reference, like through a plane, but I'm going to use the offset option. Let's create another section rotated 90 degrees away. Now I can click on the sketch button to get into sketch mode. Let me go to my sketch orientation. And over here, it's probably pretty hard for you to see this in the video, but I've got a faint outline of the first section projected onto my sketch plane. And so you can use that as a reference for sketching. For example, let's create a circle. I'm going to locate it right here at the middle and about over here. And instead of defining a diameter, I can use a tangency constraint. Let's make it tangent to the edge of the original square. That is good for my section, except your sections have to have the same number of vertices. My first section was a square, so it has four vertices. This is a circle, which has no vertices. So I'm going to sketch in some center lines in order to break this up and let them snap to perpendicular. Let's change this angle to 45. And then I will use the divide command and then break this up into four sections. That is good. And you'll notice that my start point is on the upper right corner. In the first section, which I can see over here, it's on the upper left corner. If I hit the check mark and get out of here, you'll notice that we're going to have some twist in the model. Let's go back to the Sections tab. I can click Sketch to get back to the second section. And if I want to get rid of that twist, I will just select the other vertex, hold down the right mouse button and choose Start Point. And now when I hit the check mark to get out of here, we no longer have twist in here. All right, so that's good. Let's create a, another couple of sections in here and I'll go a little quicker through the other ones. From the Section tab, I can choose the Insert command let's put this 90 degrees from the previous section. Let's hit the sketch button. Again, I can go to my sketch view. And in here, now you can see the projection of the two previous sketches. Let's just sketch in a circle. Let it snap to the center over here. And let's use 
different diameter. Let's use 15. Once again, throw in some center lines. And put this in at a 45 degree angle like before. Let's say that I forget to divide this up into multiple sections. When I hit the check mark, the preview goes away. If I go to the sections tab, you'll see that undefined number of vertices. It tells you how many vertices you have in each sketch. So let's go back to the sketch. Let me go to my sketch view. Let's move this dimension out of the way. And once again, use the divide command. And I'll start there. So I get my start point in the upper left hand corner. Let's hit the check mark. And so there I have my third section. And I'll create a couple more sections. Section, insert, 90 degrees. Hit the sketch button. Go to my sketch view. Create another circle, just keeping it nice and simple. All right, that is my fourth section. And I'm going to put one more section in here. Let's once again go to sections, insert. And I'm putting in a, another section so I can show you some of the other different options that you have in here. Let's hit the sketch button. Let's go to our sketch orientation. And for my last one, I'm going to have it sort of like in the corner over here. So let's hit the circle button. And about yay big. Let's make it tangent. And change the dimension. Throw in our center lines. Divide once more. And hit the check mark. So there we have our feature being created in here. Let's hit the check mark real quick. And so there I have my rotational blend going around 360 degrees. Let's take a look at a few of the other different options that you have in here. I'm going to go back to the rotational blend, edit definition, and first off, if I go to the tangency tab over here, you can define tangency at the different ends. And right now it is free on both ends. At the start, if I go to my right mouse button while I hover over this circle, I can change it from free to tangent or normal. You can also do that by clicking in the condition field and then using the drop down list and choosing tangent. And when I do that, it's going to highlight each edge and then you're going to select what surface you want to be tangent to. So I'll select this one over here. And as I'm doing this, you should be able to see the preview of the geometry updating, especially I think if you look up over here, let me just reposition. So let's make that tangent and then this tangent. And there, there was a little bit of movement there and then tangent to this surface. And so now it adjusted the surface to be tangent at all the different locations. Let's go to the Options tab. You have the ability of having a smooth blend, or you could choose to do a straight blend. And you'll notice if I do a straight blend, it looks kind of weird. Let's go back to Smooth over here. Uh, for some of the other different options, I'm going to get rid of the last section. I'm going to select section number five over here, hit the Remove button. And so that way, we just have it going essentially over 270 degrees. Now, if I go to the Options tab over here, there is an option to connect the end and start sections. So if I click on that, you'll notice that it's going back and it's linking up to section number one. When I check that option, capped ends is no longer available. Let's uncheck the option. If I choose to cap the ends, then it's going to look like an enclosed volume. It's going to look like a solid, but it's not because I'm generating this as a surface. But it is an enclosed volume. Let's uncheck that option over here. And so in that way, you're able to create this rotational blend in Creo Parametric. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.